Well, come on in the room. He's here in the room. This is hump day. Where did the word hump day come from? Was it because of midweek? Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on the other side of Wednesday is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And it's the dawning of a brand new day, if the Lord allow us. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. I promise you, is there a word from the Lord? Yes, it is is today is Wednesday, November 18th in the year 2020. A lot of folks didn't make it this far, you all, but uh, we hear our God giving me a message of hope for us on today. And I do believe that somebody's going to, when they finish viewing this video, um, we're going to have, I'm going to enlighten myself as well, but I pray that God give me some words to give to you all to uh, encourage us to continue on and to go on. Um, do a share. Share with them. Share with them. Hello, Frank. I see. I see. I see you, Ella Pack. I see you, uh, Dr. Bishop Hayes there. All right. All right. Keith, that's what I'm talking about. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. We're going to move on. We're going to move the train. We're going to move the train. Wow, the, these days that we're living in now is uh, kind of unbelievable that we will be seeing such a time as this. Uh, they always say history repeats itself, and I'm believing that. I'm seeing that. We're seeing it before our very eyes. When we go back to, I believe it was 1917, 18, when uh, a pandemic had hit the United States. And I guess we didn't believe it until we see it. But now it's right here before our very eyes. But God giving me some words of encouragement in this midweek, a message of hope. Stand on his word. A little midweek Bible study. I'm going to get started. I'm going to get started. In the, in the book of First God, we thank you for this day that you have made. And we're going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. God, you said that we trust in you with all of thine heart. And we lean not to thy own understanding. You will direct, you will lead, you will guide our ways. God, you see these thy peoples and, and, and the, the, the struggles and the troubles that we're going through. But at the end, God, we know that everything is going to be all right because you promised us you'll never leave us nor forsake us even until the end. So we're holding on to your word. We're trusting in you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to come from the book of 1 Samuel, a little Bible study on tonight, a little Bible study on tonight. 1 Samuel 30 and one, you know, David has some issues. Uh, we all have issues. David has some serious issues. In that first verse, it says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come back home to Ziklag on the third day, they came back and found out that everything was burnt down. Everything was gone. They took the women. They took the children. They took everything and burnt down the tents, the place they were living in. Isn't that horrible? What if you would come home and find out that everything was stolen out of your house and the thieves and the robbers broke in and just ransacked it and then they set it on fire? That would be devastating. It said then they had taken, the, even they took the women and their children and they slew everything else it, that was great as small, but they carried them all the way against their will and they went on their way. So David, so David and this man, when they came back home, when they got back there, I believe they were devastated. I know I would be devastated. The Bible says their wives, their sons, their daughters, everything was taken captivity and they were gone. Wow, what a feeling, what a feeling. A lot of people have some issues and struggles. Uh, if they come back home and they cat and ran away or they dogged and ran away, we put an APB out that... um call the police, my dog is gone and he's got some tags on it. Will you go out and, and search for him and look for him? They had taken everything. And on top of that, they looted and destroyed the whole camp. Do you notice that the enemy is invading while while they were gone? That's how the devil do. He sneak up on us at night. But these uh, devils and, and, and what's going on now, they sneak up on us 
in the broad daylight. They used to wait to dark to do their dirt in the dark, but it don't make no difference what time. They're not afraid of nothing. It's a demonic spirit that has gone through the whole world. But the devil is a lie. It said, and David was greatly distressed and disturbed, disgusted, devastated. Now, instead of them asking, what must we do? The people speak of it. You know, I guess they hold us leaders to a lot of, uh, I think they think we know all of the answers. Well, we're supposed to know all the answers, the when, the where's, and the how. But uh, we have our moments. And then the people spoke of stoning David. Really? You know, I, I think people forget the stuff that you, what you have done, and they be praising you, and they be giving you all your acclamation, and all your glory as long as things is going right. But the soul of people, they were grieved, and I can understand that because they had lost their sons, they, they had lost their daughters. The people would turn on you. People would turn on you in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like white on rice. But David, David encouraged himself. Sometimes you must encourage yourself. And it's okay to pat yourself on the back and say, you can make it when everybody else is gone, everybody else, and, and the lights are out. I don't know about you, but have anybody had a moment, uh, a, a man moment, a manly moment, where you think that we don't cry? Absolutely. That's why God made the tear ducts in our, in our eyes, Cerise, that we have when we have these moments. It's okay for us to cry. I know I'm, you know, your boy's a big old baby. Because when I'm hurt, and a lot of times it don't be from pain, but people can say some harsh things to you to make you cry. Yes, they can. But let me say this. Let me say this. It's okay to grieve. Somebody be somebody right now might be having a moment. Let me help you. Let your boy help you out. Let me encourage you in the Lord. When David was having his moment, sometimes we can move too quickly. We can move too fast. Before we go and ask which way to go, we just get out there and start driving recklessly and start driving anywhere. But David inquired before he made his decisions. Sometimes we got to come to ourselves. We must come to ourselves. He asked the Lord. He had a conversation with the Lord. Whose report are we going to believe? He had a conversation with the Lord after the he was hurt. he was really hurt. You know, when you're working with people and all of a suit, all of a sudden they take and they turn on you like white on right. I don't care how long you've been around them, but you could say one thing wrong. You could do one thing, one something wrong. And then they're ready to throw you under the bus. We're human, too. I don't know it all. But David asked a question and he asked it to the right person. Sometimes we talk to the wrong people. Misery loves company. If you don't have nothing and I don't have nothing, what's the game? I'm going to another person that don't have anything. David, he had an overwhelmed and overtaken himself, this spirit, and he asked God, shall I overtake them? Shall I go and retrieve? Shall I go and pursue? And God answered him and said, surely overtake them without fail and recover all. God told me to tell somebody we're going to get back more than before. When God speaks, whether it be good or bad, I'm going to say that again. When God speaks, whether it be good or bad, something is going to happen. I don't know about you, but I need something good. We sing a song, uh, people say, you be talking about back in the day, because we don't sing it no more. But something good is going to happen to you this very day, this very hour. I'm speaking that right now into your life. Something good, something great is going to happen to you in the name of Jesus I declare and decree this. So David went and he had, he had 600 men with him, but David pursued. And when the 400 and then, 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 and then 400 men and 200 went abode behind. So all of, he had 600, 400 decided to stay with him, but 200 left, you know, it, it, it's mighty. It, it, it hurts. It hurts. When you think you got people on your side that's ready to go to war with you, that's ready to go to battle with you, and then all of a sudden they take a turn to the left and they turn around and they say, we're going back. Really? Uh, well, I guess it's a reality. Here's a lesson for every one of us, all of us to learn. Everybody that start out with you, I'm not breaking my words. I'm just trying to use something you can understand. 
everybody that started out with you just might not finish. They might not continue. And you know what? That's okay. We must, it, that's all right. Jesus got hurt. <laughs> so, so who do we think we are? It's all right. Get hurt, do your crying, and get over it and move on. Somebody holler out, move on. There's no need of getting mad. It's no to get no need of saying why you quit me, why you didn't stay with me, why you didn't hold me up. Move on. It's time to move. Somebody say it's time to move on. Shake the dust. Move on. Just use what you got. Is there anything too hard for God? That's a question that I'm asking anybody out there, everybody out there. Is it anything too hard for God? As long as you have God on your side, as long as you keep him near you, close to your heart, I promise you, you can make it. Who got a testimony they say if it had not been for the Lord on my side that I might have lost my mind, I might have threw in the towel, I might have quit, but I'm still in the race. Not given to the swift nor to the strong, but he that endure, hold out. Our theme song was, if you just hold out until tomorrow, our late founder. And she would say, everything is going to be all right. Here's a living testimony. Don't have anybody else testify and say that you're holding out and holding on because God is yet there. It said, but here it is. I'm going to show you how God would do things. God does things miraculously. It said, but they found an Egyptian in the field and they brought him to David. Instead of interrogating him, instead of, instead of taking and, 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 and asking him, what was he doing or where was he at? David fed him. He said, feed him. How many know the way to a man's heart is that you feed him? <laughs> Before they started interrogating him, they gave him cake. They gave him ice cream. They gave him cookies. They gave him some Friday, they gave him some Larry's ribs. And they were setting him up because when you fool, when they were setting him up, then they were setting him up for to question him. He told him, he says, I haven't eaten in three days and three nights. So David, David, he decided to use his wind. When, when he said, number one, he, he you could hear his stomach growling. Anybody's stomach ever growled? And it lets you know, and you be somebody sitting next to you would say, are you hungry? Do you need to eat? Number one, let me go down the line here. Number one, he fed him. Number two, after he fed him, he said, now it's time to talk. Where did you come from? Who were you with? Question him. What happened? And then he came and he says, I'm a servant of the Amalekite. My master left me behind. See, when they use you up, use you out, Drain you of all your resources and you ain't got nothing and you don't have nothing to give them. They kick you to the curb and throw you away. And he said the reason was that they left me behind. He said, because I got sick. He couldn't perform anymore. He couldn't do what he usually do. Hmm, anybody know anybody like that that happened to you and it just hurt your feelings? It made you... And, some, some of this macho man. It hurt my feelings. That bothers me. That bothers me. As long as he was faithful, as long as he was strong, as long as he was doing the bid of the king, of his of his sergeant, whoever that he was, his lieutenant, whatever that he was, he was okay. But they left me to die. Wow. I thought the rules of a... Uh, the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force was no man left behind. Even if they have went home to be with the Lord, no man, no woman left behind. That's in the articles. That's in the declarations. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you talk to people. You know, now in this day and time, be careful how you look at people. Because they will show say, why is you looking at me? Anybody had those experiences? So I'm going to recap this again. David fed him. Then he started questioning him. Then he said, where are they camped? See how smart he was. He just didn't light into him at first and start interrogating him and start intimidating him and start throwing him under the bus. And all of a sudden, when he was full, he said, give me an A flat. And he started singing. <laughs> He turned around. Won't God turn? So who needs somebody to 
some God to turn some stuff around for you. Come on, come on. Let's declare the creed that God's going to turn some stuff around from you. In the midst of this pandemic, he turned around and said, follow me. Wow, wow, follow me. I'm going to take you to where they are. I know where they are. See, they thought they left them behind, but what they did, they left behind something that was going to be a benefit to David and his men. And then this is what happened because they thought they had it made. When David got to the camp, they were eating, they were drinking, they were drugging, they were being married. Party over here. They were partying hearty because they had no idea. They just knew that where they were hiding out at, that no one was going to get that to them. But when you leave somebody behind and you don't do right, hmm, you do the math. David said, surprise, caught him off guard. <laughs> you drunk and you fool and you sleepy and you all knocked out. You don't have no guards there. You're supposed to have, now I know in the service, I know 24, you're supposed to have somebody on, on, on the front 24-7 around the gates, guarding the gates. And if you caught sleep, they will take, and you will be punished because you're sleeping on your job. You're sleeping on your post. That is against the rules and the regulations. I don't care how tired you are. I don't care what you, but when it's your turn to be on guard duty, you're supposed to be there alert and aware. Other than that, you can get court-martialed for it. But they were all asleep. Nobody was guarding. And David said, surprise, and he smote them from the twilight until the evening, at the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them. But he saved 400 young men. He rode upon the camels and, they, and, and, and fled. Here's the new beginning. Here's the new beginning with David, with David, how he... Uh, uh, anybody ready to start over again? Because the number eight is that eighth verse. The number eight is the new beginning. Who needs a new beginning? Who needs a new start? I know I do because this pandemic has really taken a toll. I'm a boy. Your boy gonna speak about it. Has taken a toll on me. If anybody else is taking a toll on you too, the devil is a lie. Start shaking it off. He says, here's the new beginning. David recovered all. God told me to tell you and tell somebody that. It's going to be better. We're going to cross over into 2020, 2020, 2021. God is going to take and turn some stuff around. Somebody say, turn around, turn around, turn around. And then the Amalekites, that they, they carried away, recovered them all. And the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued both of his wives. My, 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 both of his wives. David had, David was a bad boy. <laughs> he got everything. <laughs> and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters. David recovered all and then some. Somebody need to say then some. I'm going to recover what the devil stole from me and then some. David took all the flock. He took all the herds. He drove, he drove them before the other cattle. And he said, this, it, 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 you know what? The same people that was talking about it said, this is David's spoil. No, this is God's spoil. If it had not been for the Lord on David's side. Now, David was not a perfect and an upright man. I mean, yeah, he, he, was, he, he wasn't a perfect and upright man because he was with God and then he turned around and did some things in contrary of God. But I'm going to show you how God worked. It's mighty... It's mighty funny. God will forgive us, but we don't want to forgive. Somebody say something wrong to you or do something wrong to you. You just hold that grudge until, and it just eats you alive. Shake it off. Turn it loose. You know, sometimes you say, I'm not going to apologize. It's okay to apologize. Even if, they, even if you feel that you wasn't wrong, it's okay to apologize. It don't take nothing. I think it make you a better man, a better woman. God said he's going to get us through this. As I'm getting ready to close, but I love, you know, I just love Psalms because he said in, in Psalm 27, 13 and 14, he said, this is why he said, I had fainted. I had fainted. You know what? And it seems like, it seems like, and it looked like you all, I'm telling you, through this pandemic, but God is still in the midst of the storm. He said, I had fainted unless I, he said, I almost quit. I almost threw in the towel. I had almost given up. Who in there? I know I feel like it. 
Who out here watching this that feel like they want to give up and throw in the towel sometime? Because it looks like that is too much. The walls are closing in. Closer to, when we think that we're out of it, here comes something else. The devil is alive. Thank God for a new start. Thank God for a new beginning. He said, my mind is made up. He said, I, I, he said and unless I had, had to believe, unless I believed, unless I chose to see, you have to make this an individual journey. I chose to see the goodness and the greatness of the Lord. I'm going to say that again. The goodness and the greatness of the Lord in the land of the living. We shall live and not die. He might not come when you want him. Because it came yesterday. Anybody needed a yesterday miracle, but you're here today to still tell a story and God have allowed you another opportunity. He might not come when you want him, but I'm admonishing everybody under the sound of my voice to wait on him. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Smile. Don't let him see that you're hurting. Smile. You can stand right in somebody's face and smile at him and you be hurting and wounded on the inside. You know, it matters what come out of your mouth. Sometimes words do hurt people. Words can cut people down. But you have to have, you have to put your guards up and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. And then you and don't let them see, just be smiling. But you know you be hurting on this side. But just smile in the devil's face and say, You ain't done nothing yet. But wait on the God. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Because here's the promise. Here's the promise. He shall, he will strengthen thine heart. Two important things, your head and your heart. I'm going to say that again. Your head and your heart. It starts up here in your mind and it trickles down to you. Your mind has all your body functions and everything on it and tell you what to do, tell you how to do it. <clears throat> but when it reaches your heart, when it reaches your heart, that's where the love come in. That's one of the most important things that there is, is your heart and your head. If the enemy gets your head, he got your heart. That's your thoughts. He'll turn everything around. He'll make you believe that it's not there. You'll be seeing it right before your very eyes. Make you believe that it's not there. But he said, I had almost given up. I had almost quit unless I decided. Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Wait on the Lord. Hey, he's the only one, only thing that's going to get us out of this mess. The devil is a lie. He might not come when you want him, but I promise you he's going to. He promised. He promised. He promised. They call this Wednesday hump day. And, and maybe somebody can help me. It's because it's the midweek and we're able, we able to cross over to a, a new start when it comes Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, but Sunday. You know what they say? Sunday is, is the worship day. Every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Every day you wake up on this side of the soil. Give God some praise. Hey, tell him how good he is. <laughs> Tell him, if it had not been for you on my side, I might have lost my mind. I might have walked away from my house. I might have walked away. You know the devil is putting so much pressure on folks. Now, some people walking away from their jobs. You better keep your job if you got a job. When they tell you to jump, just say how high. When they tell you to run, say how fast. And get your check at the end of the week to pay your bills. Millions of people are out of work right now. Do what you're supposed to do. And I promise you, there is brighter days ahead. I believe that wholeheartedly. We should learn how to celebrate every day. You know, everybody's up in the uproar, talking about we're not going to be able to spend time with a family. I have been saying it for years. Don't wait till the holiday to barbecue. Don't wait till the holiday to fix you some turkey. Don't wait till the holiday to fix you a ham. Don't wait till the holiday to take and make you some macaroni and cheese. Celebrate every day. They're telling people not to gather. Y'all know how we gathered on the holidays, on Thanksgiving, on Christmas, on Easter, how we had the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on, especially Tammy. I'll be seeing all that food, Tammy, that you be spreading out. But see, Tammy, I like what you do because you spread the table every Sunday. That's what I'm talking about. Don't deprive yourself of nothing. Come on, somebody. Tremaine talking about she wanted some barbecue chicken. I say, honey, I'm going to show you how to start it, and you're going to finish it. You're going to do it today because I got to study for Bible study on tonight. And she did it. Y'all go online and go on Facebook and see Tremaine out there barbecuing. Daddy's baby girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did it. She did it. But God, God, there is brighter days ahead. 
Learn how to celebrate and learn how to appreciate. They're getting ready to lock us down again. They're getting ready to lock us down again. But do not allow the devil to lock your mind up. I'm praying for everybody. This is a mess. But God, you know what? Let, let, me, let me honestly say this. Let me honestly say this. I still believe God was in the plan behind this mess that was going on. Everything was messed up. And, and if he had not done what he would, what he, if he had not done what he let happen, I believe he would have got in for a second term. So God know how to do things. God know how to fix this thing. Hey, you might get away with it for a little while, but you're not going to get away with it. Because he didn't bring us this far to leave us now. Hey, so somebody start preparing yourself for 2021. Say, Lord, if you allow me to get to the other side. <laughs> I promise you. I promise you. But you got to make a promise to yourself. I'm going to do better. I'm not going to wait to no holiday to celebrate you. I'm not going to wait to Sunday to praise you. Hey, come on. Come on in the room. Yeah. I promise you. God will heal. God will deliver. He will set you free in Jesus' name. Hey. Don't let, don't let your mind get boxed in. It will. It will. They, they, they shut, they get ready to shut down. The, I understand. I believe science, but I still believe God. He says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's going to be there to the end. I'm praying to plead and cover you with the blood of your whole household. Won't he do it? He's going to do it. He did it before and he's going to do it again. David recovered back more than before. I declare and decree God's going to take and he's going to turn this thing around. So celebrate on tomorrow. Celebrate if Lord, Lord allow you to see Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Celebrate. Don't wait till Thursday to fix no turkeys. Fix you a turkey tomorrow. Fix you some ribs tomorrow, whatever day, whatever you have a craving for, go out and do it while the blood is running warm in your veins. Celebrate. Somebody holler out, celebrate. And God told me to tell you, 2021, he's going to turn this thing around. They're coming up with, 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 you know, who has the final say? Who has the final say? Joe. Hover has the final say. God said it happened. I stepped back. See, when God stepped out of it, when man think they know any and everything, he said, I'm going to step back, but yet I'm going to be there to rescue you. Wow. He's going to rescue us, you all. Hold on. I believe it's going to be brighter day. I believe this thing is going to turn around. God knew what he was doing when he allowed it, when he allowed this man to act up the way that he was acting. It was tearing everybody up except for the, his base. It was my it bothered me. I know it was bothering you all. Can't pay your bills. Everything falling behind. People in the soup line. But God, God, may the Lord bless you real good. May he smile on you. May he give you traveling grace and mercy. And I plead the blood over your household. And God is yet in charge and in control. Just hold on just a little while longer. Help is on the way. I promise you that. See you Sunday. May the Lord bless you. Amen, amen, amen. See, I don't say bye-bye. I say see you later. Peace.